Welcome back. To, uh, welcome to uh, Brainstorming America. I'm Ken Rollins. I'm here with John Merrill. Good to see you, John. Hey, Ken. You bet what you've been doing? <laughs> All Working. I can. Every day, brother. Working. Uh, I want to, before we get started, I want to ask you, you got a, you were Secretary of State for eight, eight years. You, how long was you in the legislature? Four years. Four years. Yes, sir. Then eight years as Secretary of State. Now, you're working for, uh, I don't say it, Wagner? That's right. Is it, it Reese Engineering? Yes, sir. Well, I got that. What is, that's got to be a different... Uh, well, it's not really different in some of the ways where people would think, because one of the things that my position enables me to do as Director of Public Policy and Strategic Markets is to continue to travel all over the great state of Alabama each and every day. All so, 67. All 67. <laughs> hashtag all 67. Now, this is actually the 13th time in the 12th year in a row that I will have been to all 67 counties. As of this recording, I've been to 48 counties for approximately 300 it's been 334 visits to those counties. This enables me to find out what the needs are of those municipalities, of the counties, of the utilities, of the associations that we work with, and to see how Wagner, our firm, which is in six states, and we have 19 offices in those six states, is able to work with those areas to help them transform their communities and help them become all they want to be. And that's what our goal is each and every day. Well, I, I, the folks out there, rather than go through a bunch of numbers, everybody knows how to get in touch with me. If you need to get in touch with John, and if you work for a city, your city council, or your mayor, if you work in any part of engineering, anything you do with the city, you need to get in touch with John. You may not, you may be something that you don't know that you need that he's got. It, working in that firm, they're well known for addressing all those issues. And one of the issues that they have to be involved is uh, environmental type thing and every city is facing that uh, from your storm water runoff to whatever uh, and and they're scrambling and don't know what to do uh, I personally know uh, all about storm water I was in charge of it for a lot of years but it's rattling people that didn't know the people that work with me at uh, the depot had no idea what storm water runoff meant but when I explained it to them in classrooms, it was very simple how they could handle their problems without violating any laws. Because if you violate uh, environmental laws, you're in trouble with your city, your county, or your business. So uh, that, that's one thing you're doing. You're working with a company that yes, does that, that addresses the problem that can fix things before they broke. Yes, sir. Uh, that, that's the main thing. I would, as an administrator of a city responsible for a budget, would not want to be paying a 50000 or 500000 fine for something that was just done by not knowing or was reckless on my people's part. And, and the more people you got working for you, the more opportunities you have to screw something up. No doubt. Agree? No doubt. They get amen. Amen. <laughs> but I'm glad that you're doing that over there because... At least for the folks out there watching us, and know that they can get help if they got if they're a city manager or in a city or a county. Yes, right? sir. Even the people up in Cleveland County. Could. 100%. <laughs> We're actually building a bridge up there, Are you? and we got some federal resources from Senator Britt, and she was so excited to be able to help these folks as we will construct a new bridge to take care of some basic needs in that particular part of Cleveland County, in the northern part of the county, because Pupwood trucks can't ride on that bridge anymore. School buses can't ride on that bridge anymore. Emergency response vehicles cannot traverse that area. And so this is going to help redirect uh, the traffic in the normal pattern where it's intended to be. Let's see all the folks out there watching in. Uh, how many people out there handled Pupwood before? When he said that word, I went back a little bit in my mind. But I'm trying to see in the audience the people sitting there at home, how many of you did pulpwood? Uh, yeah, a bunch of them. Uh, <laughs> I used to do That's the hardest thing in the world to do. You know how long a piece of pulpwood is? About eight foot long. Right. And you know how heavy that is when you first pick it up? So it soaked up all the rain and all that. And you got to throw it up on the truck in a certain way. You stack it in. Guess what? When you're stacking it, you're stacking right here. As you get tired, you're stacking way up there. 
So it, I was trying to figure out a way, I was, I was a young man, how I could stack the top first, and then when I get down and get tired, I can stack the lower part. Never could figure that out. Maybe Wagner can help When you me. figure that out, you let me know, Coach. <laughs> Y'all don't think engineering could figure that no, out? I think it's going to take a little bit more, and that's going to take a miracle from the Lord God Almighty for that to happen. But can you sympathize with me? I can. Okay. Thank you. That, for that and many other reasons. <laughs> but I would have to get that thick of wood and throw it way up on the truck. And pulp wood is some of the hardest work I've ever done in my life. But would you say that word, it triggered, it triggered me. I, I'm like a liberal. I've been triggered over you. Now they, there was a uh, bill uh, still talking about the things that's in the news, folks. There was a bill that came out of California that was going to give $150,000 to the illegals and uh, illegal aliens that Camilla Harris don't want to talk about. Kamala Harris, whatever. She don't want to say the word illegal immigrants, but I say it. But she wanted to give uh, the governor, uh, not the governor, but the Senate and the House of California voted, it wasn't unanimous, but they were voted to and passed the bill to give $150,000 to each illegal that wanted to start their first home, first home in California. Of course, the, he, uh, he was able to override the bill and veto it. And thank goodness for the people of California, I got relatives out there. but. That's, that just shows you where you're headed today. That, he missed, dodged the bullet then. California, you dodged the bullet, but it'll come back. Uh, well, speaking of coming back, we hope that you're going to come back and join us for the second segment of the 73rd episode of Brainstorm in America. We're going to take our first break, go get you a Coca-Cola and some potato chips, and we'll see you back here in just a minute. Welcome to Brainstorm in America. Ken Rollins here. John, uh, I talked with John Merrill. John, when uh, I know you noticed uh, NASA sent two people into space a month or so ago, got up to the space station, and couldn't come back home. And they're going to be there for a while. Going to be there for a while. They're going to grow up. They're going to grow old. They're going to come back like February or something like that. Yeah, they're going to be there through in, into 2025. Guess how they're coming back. Well, I hope they're coming back in one piece. But who's going to get them? Uh, I can't remember. Elon Musk. Oh, that's right. He sent them SpaceX. We sent our NASA, our governmental, our government-sponsored vehicle. It came back the other day empty. They're afraid to put people in it. Isn't that something? That's really sad. But to get Elon Musk to send his space, SpaceX it's going to go up there and bring them home. Don't worry, I'll go get it. A man, an individual, is going to do what this country is supposed to be doing. We used to be, NASA was just it. Oh, well, that's exactly right. It's but so the, was the FBI. Yeah. I mean, there I were a lot the, of things that used to be just it. So was the we CIA. Were the elite and, leadership in those areas, especially with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and especially with the National Aeronautic and Space Administration. And to see where we have fallen to today is really a tragedy for our nation. It is. I saw something on the debate last night. They were talking about the FBI. This, and I was hoping Trump would jump in there and say, yeah, that's really what we feel good about now is having, having them overlooking anything because with the, with the Secret Service, look what's happening with that. There's a time and I know I, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'll let you address it. Uh, there was a time that at the hierarchy of all law enforcement, if there was a bunch of people standing in a group around a certain person, the governor or so on, if it was the city police, sheriff's department, the FBI, or the Secret Service, I, as a human being, would be looking up to the Secret Service as the top of all of them, at more than the FBI, the whole thing. Now our Secret Service is laughing stock after what happened with Trump. I mean, it opened up so many cans of worms to find out really how bad it was. It was just that, we thought it was just that one incident. Now they find it all kind of things. Five people have been suspended. John, when's the last time you heard of somebody being fired? In the, 
in the administration? Uh, it's not not frequent. Yeah, I tell you something. But, you know, I, when I was to work at Anna Stormy Depot, I worked for the federal government. So you can't fire anybody. You know, they told me you couldn't fire anybody. Well, that is like 12, one year. But you have to do the paperwork. And so I'm thinking that we just got a bunch of lazy people in government that don't want to do the paperwork because nobody gets fired. I don't care. All them people that was in charge, them generals that were in charge of Afghanistan um, exhibit or uh, exit, brother, when they exited from Afghanistan, there was 13 people killed. Somebody should have lost a job, if not more than one, at least three of, three of them. And generals, it don't matter. Trump fired a bunch of generals. And they made a big Kamala Harris made a big deal about it last night. A lot of them generals, one of them is on record as talking about Russia, Russia, Russia. He was in there with the CIA and all of them talking about, yeah, it was uh, Trump did this, Trump did that. Found out he didn't know nothing. That he was one of the liars that come up with the Trump, the uh, Russia's situation beforehand. So just because they're general, don't think that that puts them above. I sat with a guy that he they named Fort Benning after him, General Moore, Hal Moore. And he is a free friend of mine, and I asked him one time to point blank. I said, you're a three-star general, retired. Why don't, aren't you on television as a talking head answering questions, military questions and stuff? You're, you're a born-out wartime general, hero. Why aren't you out there? He just point blank said, I don't know any more about it than you do. Neither do they. He said, those talking heads don't either. So they'll call up some guy and, and he'll ask some, he's, uh, he's got a, some guy's got a permit to work on an airplane or work on a tank or something, but he don't know all the strategy that's going on out of the Pentagon, but yet he's still on television quoting all these things that he's doing, you know, or you got a guy that, a lieutenant colonel in the National Guard, and he's all of a sudden a military specialist. He says, I'm not that. He says, I'm just Hal Moore, retired military, don't know nothing about nothing other than what I'm doing, and you're in Colorado, and that's it. I thought that was so, so respectful of him to do that. Uh, here he is, he, he's a military hero. Sure. They named the they named a, And had a TV after. show made after him, too, hey, uh, with Band uh, of Brothers. Absolutely. Uh, we were soldiers once, and I got, I got the book and got it autographed. Knew his wife we were well too. She, she wanted to have another movie made. We were soldiers too, for the women that had to take care of the, the soldiers when they went to war. She said I'd like to have one of that, and she said I'd like to change a lot of things in that movie too. But uh, yeah, that's that's a great story. But but uh, just because these generals up there were telling that Biden what to do, somebody should have got fired, somebody should be lost their, their retirement pay, somebody should have been punished for 13 lives that was lost, useless, useless, and, uh, and even more. That was, just, uh, that was just a bungled situation, embarrassment. And it went on to cause other leaders to think that we are less than what we used to be, and I have to agree with them. I would, there's no doubt about it. If and I was ever going to that's attend. a major loss, not just for the service, but for our country overall. If you were a bad, bad character, you'd be wanting to attack America. Now would be your time to do it. So yes, that's sir. What, that's what worries me. Well, we hope you'll come back and join us for the final segment of this week's episode of Brainstorming America right after this final break. Welcome back to Brainstorming America. I'm Ken Rollins, and I'm here with John Merrill. John. We went to a break that's talking about their, our spaceship stranded in space and Elon Musk is going to go get it with his SpaceX. Uh, but a lot of that had to do with, uh, with the cost, the cost associated with it, what NASA was saying. You know, they're not, NASA is being hampered by they don't get as much money as they need to do to, to do the things that that uh, undoubtedly that Elon Musk can do, and it's a shame that we got an individual doing more than our government, and it, uh, it really, really bothers me to see that. Now, I know you saw, uh, for the people in Alabama, whoever's watching us here, we saw where some of these illegals, 
uh, there's over as a FBI, if you can trust them, says there's over a hundred of these gangs in the United States. Over one hundred gangs of Venezuelans. Now, what did I when you heard Trump last night saying they're sending us their their criminals? Well, just think about it. If you were a country, the head of a country, anywhere, pick the place. Let's say Venezuela. You got a prison full of prisoners. You got to feed them. Hey, I got a better idea. Put them on a boat, send them to Mexico, and let them cross on over into America. We got rid of our criminals. You, you see, you see no with doubt. me? And, and you know darn well if the situation was on the other foot. They said, well, America, you need to send some people to Venezuela. Are we going to send our best? Or are we going to send, we got a bunch of prisons too. Good chance for us to open up Atmore and all these other prisons. And then if we don't have to pay them, look what we'd have in our That's right. Offer. You told it. So they're doing that. Don't tell me they're not. They showed up in, in Aurora, Colorado, and I saw them with an AK-47. And you folks that saw this with me, a young man with an AK-47, <laughs> which the Russians use, not the American, but they had a Russian rifle. They knocked on knocked the door handle off on the apartment, and a young girl hand in there. Down the street was other people with their pillows and blankets and being kicked out of their apartment. A whole entire complex removed. I don't remember, it's like, it looked like it was at least 80, 90 units. And all those people were removed so that Venezuelan gang could relocate in there. And they said, the FBI says there's 100 of those gangs. So wherever you're watching us from today, there may be a gang living down the street from you. That's the, what uh, Kamala Harris has put us, the, the, the danger that she's put us in by opening up our southern border. That's just one to come in there from Venezuela. And that, that you saw that story. Yes, sir. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? No, I think you hit the nail on the head. And the people that have indicated that the video that was observed was video from a long time ago, obviously have not been paying attention and see how real that is and how quickly it can come to pass again if law enforcement is not given the support that they need in order to eradicate this type of behavior by those illegals who are actually invading our country in so many different ways, whether it's with contraband, whether it's with weapons, whether it's with illegal and illicit drugs, all of those things have got to receive attention, but we have to empower our law enforcement professionals and our DEA agents to make sure they can properly address it when it's appropriate. Yep, and uh, the <coughs> mayor of Aurora, Colorado, asked Americans to stop talking about that. So I guess I'm out of line even talking about it here today. He wanted us to stop talking about it because it makes Aurora, Colorado look bad. Also, the governor put out the same message. Those are Democrat governors and a good Democrat mayor. Don't want people to know what's going on there, but that's these, these people come across the border. And I saw so one of the, Peter Ducey, or one of the reporters from Fox, interviewing some people is coming across from Arizona, coming into California. And, uh, they asked me, where are you from? We're Pakistan. We used to Afghanistan. Where are you from? Uh, Samoa. I'm from every part of the world. I mean, they was like from South America up to, to Afghanistan or whatever. In every country, they were from China. Now, how did they get from China to California? You know, that's, that's something that people need to ask themselves. Here are these people as travelers from African countries. How did they make it to the coast of Texas? But you know, that transition that you're talking about is something that's so very important for all of us to remember. Because in each and every point in our lives, at some time in our life, we will all have transitions that occur. Uh, today is no different for Brainstorm in America and no different for WCEA TV 24. One of our favorite people that has been a part of this station for decades is about to retire. Now fortunately he's not leaving us. He's not going to be leaving Brainstorming America nor is he going to be leaving Veterans Issues. But 
What we would like to do is to introduce to you someone that has done a tremendous job in making sure that we're able to reach you each and every week. So, Jeff Sparks, come on up here and join us. We'd like for you to stand between Ken and me this you want to go ahead and morning. Make up, you want to go ahead and make up before you're going? A little bit late for that, not yeah. sure they could even help. Right. So, <laughs> oh Lord, look here, look here. What? We, we also want you to know oh. how much we appreciate you. So Ken and Karen and I actually have prepared a cake for you that we want to present to you so you can take and share it with your loved ones. And I'm sure there's going to be some people here today that are going to take a little bit of it before we leave. But just so you can see it, and then we'll hold it up for the camera. As it says, congratulations on your retirement. And we know it really says semi-retirement because of what you're going to be doing. But right. we knew that you would fully enjoy this. So let's show our audience the cake. And then we want to hear from you just a minute. Now, you're, you're not somebody that likes to be in front of the camera. Right. But I know you probably have a couple of thoughts you'd like to share. So this would be a good time. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I mean, I love it here. I've been here 12 years. That's right. 12 years, man. Yeah. Well, and we love you, and it's, we love all that you do, and your teammates love you, too, and that's the reason they wanted to come in here. We've got MJ, our producers, with us, and we've got other folks that are a part of the station, and they wanted you to know how much they appreciate you and how much you mean to all of us, and that was one of the things that they wanted to share in today by coming down and by showing you their appreciation. I need appreciate to know. It. How many of you guys, MJ, or the rest of y'all got to put your hands in there and mix this up like I did? Y'all of you did. Good job. I, I, I didn't wash my hands too good, so I'm hoping that y'all think about that, and I'll have a lot of cake left here for myself. <laughs> no, I ain't nobody touch that cake. But, uh, yeah, I, this is a guy that when you hear me on whichever show I got that I'm talking to a guy named Jeff, I say, Jeff, it's just a ghost. Nobody's ever seen him because he's shy. Of all the things he does here behind the camera, he don't like being on the other side of the camera. No doubt. But we so appreciate you joining us each and every week for Brainstorming America. We hope that when you think about our show in the future, you'll think about Jeff Sparks and you'll think about the dedication that we have by this great team here at TV24. Thanks for joining us this week, and we'll see you again next time.